An Introduction to Minerals What is a mineral? As we can see from these images, minerals take many different shapes and sizes and forms. Minerals are generally described as a natural, inorganic, crystalline solid. Keep in mind that most rocks on Earth, such as this granite, are mixtures of minerals. In this case, there are three, maybe four separate minerals in the one thing we call a rock. How do you identify a mineral, and how do we know what a mineral is? We start by asking four rather basic questions. The first question is, is the substance a compound? As you can see from several mineral compounds listed here, mineral compounds have a consistent chemical composition. Throughout the whole mineral, they will have the same groupings of atoms and molecules. It's not a mixture, and it's chemically uniform throughout. A mixture may have chunks or pieces of different things, and they're not mixed thoroughly. Something like this rock here, we can clearly identify is not a mineral because you can see pieces and different things mixed in a non-uniform way. Now keep in mind the rock may be a mixture of separate minerals, but the rock itself would not be considered a mineral. The next question, does the substance occur naturally? It's all important to understand that this is naturally on the earth or anywhere else in the universe. Sometimes minerals may form, such as this meteorite, in the far reaches of space. Minerals must be naturally occurring, but also may be manufactured. Many times we consider minerals, we think of the seven dwarves down in a cave mining for gems. I had a similar experience several years ago. There's a mine in western North Carolina that used to be owned by Tiffany and Company. This garnet mine was mined for gem quality garnets. Here you see a picture of my son Thomas who's actually extracting a garnet from the side of the wall of the mine. In this case, he extracted the garnet that was nearly the size of a baseball. So many times minerals are naturally formed, but it's also important to understand that minerals may be made by humans. In this picture, we see a scientist with a rather high-tech setup, and he's in the process of making a mineral. In the case of pictured, they're making cubic zirconia. Zirconia are actually minerals that are naturally occurring, but they may frequently be made, and the ones that are made by humans often can be made to high precision and high quality and are used in gemstones for many jewelry applications, such as this beautiful cubic zirconia pictured to the right. The next question, is the substance inorganic? Is the substance made of living things or the remains of living things? Something like this coal or the wood from a tree clearly are material that came from living things, so therefore they cannot be considered minerals. Is the substance solid in crystalline form is our next question. The first part is pretty straightforward. The object cannot be a liquid or a gas. Water is an interesting example here. Water in its liquid form or in the gas form of water vapor will not be considered a mineral. But ice, as a solid form of water, may be considered a mineral. But I want to look a little more at the word crystal. What does it mean to be a crystal? Many of you may picture a pointy object or some clear piece of quartz. While those are indeed are crystals, I'd like you to think about scientifically what a crystal is. I'd like you to think about the grocery store. Yes, the produce at your local grocery store. Think of the apples or oranges or maybe in the summer the tomatoes. If you go to a general grocery store, the produce is displayed very differently than at a high-end grocery store. Think about a place like Food Lion or a common grocery store. Some guy named Bob goes in the back and gets a bag of oranges. He'll put them out on a table for the customers to pick up and purchase. These oranges may come from Florida or California, but they're just bagged and piled haphazard way on a table. On the other hand, if you go to a high-end grocery store, something like Fresh Market or Whole Foods, you're going to see the oranges displayed very differently. 
instead of having Bob unload a package of oranges and put the bag on the table, they have someone with a very nice name tag in a very nice outfit who is paid to precisely stack the oranges and apples in very beautiful and controlled arrangements. These pyramid-like forms, or neatly stacked produce, are very similar to what we have going on in a crystal. A crystal, very simply, is an orderly arrangement of the atoms. They will pack neatly, and they'll often break or be able to be split along smooth, even surfaces, just like the oranges or apples or tomatoes at the high-end grocery store. Think of that as an orderly arrangement of produce, just like a crystal is an orderly arrangement of atoms. Also, it's important to understand that some crystals may be microscopic, so you may look at a sample and it will be very difficult to determine, unless you're using a microscope, as to whether or not the object is made of crystals. On the other hand, crystals can be very different. In the Naica mine in Mexico are some of the largest crystals ever discovered. These gypsum crystals are as much as 10 meters or approximately 30 feet long, some over a meter in diameter. You can see from this National Geographic photo, the miner at the left is dwarfed by these enormous crystals. When we classify minerals, there are several major groupings of minerals. The first we talk about are the silicates. Silicates contain a silicon atom with two oxygen atoms. SiO2 is the silicate group. 96% of the Earth's crust is made out of silicate minerals. Of course, the most ex common examples of these are quartz and feldspars. Both quartz and feldspars can come in a variety of different colors. There are six major non-silicate mineral groups, the halides, the carbonates, sulfates, sulfides, oxides, native elements. Let's take a look at each group. The non-silicate group halides are often referred to as salts. Of course, there are many different types of salts, but in this case, the element chlorine or fluorine is combined with the metals sodium, potassium, or calcium. Something like halide, sodium chloride, is a very common, frequently used mineral. Another one, fluorite, is a calcium fluoride. It's unique because it comes in many different colors. This is the non-silicate group carbonates. Carbonates contain CO3. Keep in mind, CO is carbon monoxide, CO2 carbon dioxide, but CO3 is the carbonate group. Copper carbonate, or this beautiful malachite, is this lovely green stone that's frequently used in jewelry. Calcite, on the other hand, is a calcium carbonate. This very common mineral is the main component of the rock limestone, so it's very common on the surface of the earth. The non-silicate sulfate group contain a sulfur with four oxygen atoms. Something like the desert rose barite is a barium sulfate. Gypsum, or the picture on the upper right, selenite, which is a special variety of gypsum, is a calcium sulfate. This is a very common mineral. In fact, you have tons of it in your home. Sheetrock, or drywall, the wallboard and plaster in your house is made out of gypsum. The non-silicate group sulfides have one or more elements combined with the element sulfur. Chalcopyrite is a copper sulfide, where galena is a lead sulfide, and pyrite, the common fool's gold, is iron sulfide. Oxides are another non-silicate group. They contain oxygen bonded to some element other than silicon. Now you'd think silicon dioxide should be an oxide, but there's just so many silicates that we give them a group all to themselves. A common oxide is hematite. It's an iron oxide. Rutile is a titanium oxide. Corundum is a very common aluminum oxide. Occasionally, the aluminum oxides may be blue 
or red. If it's blue, we often refer to them as sapphires. The red ones we call rubies. Finally, the last group of common non-silicate minerals are the native elements. These are pure elements. They're not a mix of several different elements in a compound. They're just one element all by themselves. I bet you can guess what many of these chemical symbols are. AU? That's right, gold. We'd all like a little bit more of this. CU? Copper. Of course, pennies used to be made out of copper. Now there's just a little bit of copper on the exterior. Sulfur. We mentioned this several times already. The yellow substance that has a pretty foul odor. Finally, carbon is another common mineral that may be found as a native element. In this case, graphite, a very soft form of carbon, or a very hard form of carbon that we all know and would like to see a little more of, are diamonds. These are just a few of the native elements. There's over 20 elements that may be found as a native element mineral.